Hey there, everyone. It's new here. Proud owner of a recent acquired headhunter, as you can see where my mouse has scrolled over. It's a thing of beauty. Got it nearly perfect, actually. And surprisingly, only took like nine divine orbs to hit this. <laughs> uh, dexterity rolls a little bit low, but I don't need it because I'm already 100% spell suppression. And that's good enough for me. Well, it's not around my waist. It's in my stash. Why? Why don't I have it on me? Well, here's the deal. Last video, I made a, a, a funny little comment about saying I, I felt like I already had the headhunter before I acquired it. And then I proceeded to run maps, you know, without the headhunter and all that jazz. And yeah, apparently I was more right than I realized because... Of course, since making that video, I put the headhunter on and started farming similar farms that I was already doing. I didn't even realize I had it on until like three maps later when I finally got the infamous teleport mechanic and I started teleporting all over the place and was like, oh, oh wait a minute, oh yeah, that's right, I have a headhunter on. Wait, what? I didn't even realize it. <laughs> it didn't even like register with me. Um, the, the benefits of the headhunter the whole time for like two maps straight. And uh, yeah, I guess jokes on me because I was half joking at the time when I said that. And, you know, I got to thinking about that and I started watching some other content creators and, well, I was inspired to make another farming video. Some people have been making these 100, uh, 100 map farming sessions. I know, I, I think Grimrow does that. Uh, there are a few other people who do that. And I would never do that before because usually I'm all about like higher level juicing where you're like running a map for between running the map and looting the map. It's like 30 minutes or more. <laughs> But, you know, with Nemesis 3 gone, and it sure does seem like speed, mapping speed is the name of the game. Now with all the Atlas changes, a whole lot of stuff we're still discovering. But I just keep digging deeper and deeper into this, like, super fast strategy of mapping. I'm honestly, I just keep earning more and more currency with, with uh, little slights and tweaks to what I'm doing. I decided I wanted to try a new strategy with you today especially for those of you who have been you know really grind really on that grind struggling to get that headhunter for yourself and um i want to show you just how much you don't need it <laughs> basically um shrines yes it's shrines again god i always have to talk about the shrines because they're just so damn powerful here's my here's my dump tab we're gonna do a new farm here I'm going to do 100 maps straight. Honestly, it's not even going to take me that long because I'm going to be doing this insanely fast. This is basically... This is practically an Alk and Go strategy. Uh, I, I saw some, some guy on Reddit <laughs> make a post about a video. He called it Scarab and Go. I thought that was kind of ingenious because, you know, you have like Alk and Go and then... Um, then sometimes people mean with sextants, but usually not. And they certainly mean no scarabs when they say that. Uh, but here this guy basically just did scarabs and alk and go, I guess. <laughs> Called a scarab and go. So that's kind of what we're doing here, actually. It was kind of brilliant because, you know, if ever there was a season when uh, the sort of mindset of alk and go could translate into scarab and go, this is the season because scarab, their scarabs are, are a plenty. Rusted scarabs are like dirt cheap. Uh, well, kind of with the exception of ambush and harbinger, they're still worth like two or three chaos apiece. Because they're so darn good with the Atlas passives. And so popular. That. But I mean these other two are complete junk. And I'm going to explain the strategy here. I do have one compass in here. And yeah you might have guessed what this was. Before you even saw me scroll over. <laughs> this thing. I just cannot play without this thing. I mean. I was I was like this close to like going no sexton. But then I was like. No, dude, I, I just can't. Like, there's no way I can do a strategy like this and not use the sex now. I have to. I just absolutely have to. It's so unbelievably powerful. <clears throat> it seems like every uh, strategy I do, I'm essentially showcasing the Gloom Shrine with the Shrine nodes. And the Atlas looks like this. I will post a link in the description below so you can see. The name of the game for this one is all about crazy speed. Speed and power in a manner where you don't even need to have a headhunter. Honestly, guys, if you're if you're someone who 
has been trying to farm the headhunter you don't have it you feel like it's completely out of reach this is going to prove that you really don't need it if you're a mapper at all if you have really any inherent speed at all in mapping i mean this is going to be a total breeze for you if you're even if you're like a fairly well geared bosser this is going to be a complete joke thanks to the gloom shrine you could you could run basically anything with the exception of an outright broken build <laughs> If your atlas is basically complete or near completion, which kind of in also indirectly means you, you have at least some gear on you, this is going to be amazing. So, look, this is the three fastest mechanics in the league. We've got Strongbox, Essence, and Harbinger. There are no other mechanics that are really even faster than that, with the exception of, I suppose, Shrines, which, of course, is <laughs> in here. So, basically, we're running the four fastest mechanics in the league, one of which in incredibly increases your speed otherwise with shrines uh we're focusing still on pack size rarity increased effective modifiers increased effective modifiers oh no it's so scary uh no not when you're as powerful as you're gonna be uh with this particular strategy uh i'm going searing exarch because i do have a fairly strong character it is a caustic arrow toxic rain about 20 exalts invested in this gear. Honestly, this is like the equivalent of 2x invested in a meta mapper right now. Like, this is not even a meta build anymore. They nerfed it a little bit. Um, I only have like 800k DPS in clear and like 2 million DPS single target. It's not that impressive, really. Although, Caustic Arrow is incredible in terms of clear, uh, clear but actual DPS numbers, no. And if your character is particularly weak then i recommend going for the shadow of hunger instead but i do want to do searing exarc because we're going to be running these maps in literally like two or three minutes flat so essentially we're farming invitations and uh, therefore i even put these points in over here we're going up we're cranking up the pack size increase effect modifiers we're cranking up the quantity rarity wherever we can and we're running essentially the four fastest mechanics that exist in the game right now on the atlas i'm not I'm not blowing time on Blight, Breach, or anything like that. Basically, the goal of this build is to have fun. <laughs> and experience the glory of a headhunter without actually having a headhunter. I'm not even kidding when I say the shrines. If you set up a map the way I'm setting this up right here, you get more power with the shrines than you do with a headhunter on average. I can honestly say that. Like, with a straight face. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Uh, not even half kidding. Uh, it, it's true. Because, I mean, I, I, I've done it now. I've actually done it. If you have a map and you spend the majority of your time in the map with five or so sh mega, major shrines. <laughs> plus a couple lesser shrines. And especially if you have a gloom shrine on. That is that is not just on par with a headhunter. That vastly exceeds what a headhunter can do here i'll prove it you know i kind of pulled this down last time and you know a headhunter really strong right there's a modifier in there people are very familiar with that gives you an incredible amount of uh movement speed and attack speed right well guess what we have an acceleration shrine okay and with the goal which is of course kind of mandatory for this build you're going to want to have a goal on for the 75% increased effect, 50% increased duration of shrines. And with a couple of nodes right here, I believe. Yeah, 20% increased effect of shrines and a 30% increase gives us a whopping 125% increase effect of shrines. You do the math. You got 50% increased action speed. That's like five times the value of tailwind on boots. Elevated tailwind on boots, even. <laughs> by default <laughs> what this shrine is absolutely bonkers and then it ends up being what like 112 percent increased action speed or something absolutely outrageous and then the increased projectile speed i mean now gives us increased damage if you're a bow character uh, as well as some others look i mean even the shrine that i don't even care about brutal shrine is 50 percent increased damage that's huge uh diamond shrine actually doesn't matter for me at all but all strikes crit i mean <laughs> divine shrine literal immortality <laughs> the shrine happens all the echoing shrine is is probably the most busted shrine of all 
with 100% more attack speed of its own multiplier on top of that. <laughs> See, all of your skills are repeated. Just absolutely stupid. Um, here's a shrine that really doesn't do anything. A freezing shrine. Okay, so there we got one that's bad. Impenetrable shrine gives you more defenses than a headhunter can ever give you. Uh -huh. So, with all the buffs you're talking about, well over 200% increased armor evasion and energy shield. That's way more defense than a headhunter uh, gives you. And don't get me wrong, a headhunter will give you a lot of defense with a lot of buffs up, but this is, more, <laughs> this is way more. Uh, speaking of defense, massive shrine, 30%, 40% increased maximum life? Okay. I guess it's about 100% increased maximum life <laughs> with all the buffs. Uh, replenishing shrine... Makes a complete joke of recovery uh, there. And then the Resistance Shrine is insane. Because if you pick this shrine up, you have 90 max all res with this setup. You automatically have 90 max all res. If you had 75 max all res, now you have 90 max all res. And even if you run a map with minus all res on it, which makes it exceedingly more dangerous, I still come up to, I still come out with like 86% all res once I get this shrine. Skeletal Shrine means you're basically never going to get hit because you have 100 skeletons surrounding you. Shadow Shrine there. And then the Gloom Shrine, the granddaddy of them all. This does something the Headhunter doesn't even do. This is basically a... Just an absolute overpowered form of Corpse Explosion. Imagine Corpse Explosion in the best state of the game. You get it for free, essentially, on all attacks. Then you have the Lesser Shrines, which is some of the really good shrines. They're lesser effect. It just spawns every 20 seconds. Whatever. You can even run Blunderbore if you want for to make this strategy... <laughs> hilariously strong but the strength requirement i'm not going to mess with that so i don't do that so yeah this is probably the last time i'm going to show this page but dude if i haven't driven this thing home to you yet i, <laughs> I don't know what to say uh so we're kind of going all in on shrines with this build by the way the if you go for the compass here one thing about this is really good Increase gives you an additional gloom shrine. It also increases the duration of shrine effects by a further 50% increased amount. All shrine effects will last more than two minutes. All major shrine effects will last more than two minutes. So yeah. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I don't know what what you could possibly ask on that. Uh, I, I I just need to show you. I just simply need to show you. I'm gonna put this right here. And I'm not even going to put sections on my other three. I don't care. My I don't need it. I'm, I'm basically trying to do an Alk and Go version of this. I'm trying to make it as baseline as it can. I, I cannot imagine doing this strategy without putting a Gloom Shrine in, though. Because it's, just, it's not like it defeats the purpose, but you're just I'm leaving so to much to be desired <laughs> if you don't do that. Uh, yeah, I got 100 maps here. Most of these are double corrupted cemetery maps. I've acquired them over time with like uh you know the six and eight modded corrupted maps over time or whatever it's fine you know it, it counts in the investment portion which is apparently about seven seven and a third exalts to start so yeah you know getting everything together is not that bad you know if you're someone who hates like piecing together a whole bunch of mega juicing materials then this isn't too bad because you can buy a hundred scarabs a hundred rusted scarabs in massive bulk this season super easy i buy all a hundred at once I don't even pay a premium for it. Like it's just, I just pay the regular default price. The cemetery maps, you may have to farm for yourself. Uh, maps are getting a little weird right now. They're kind of simultaneously hard to buy and hard to sell. <laughs> it's hard to explain. Um, but the nice thing about maps is that they're like 100% self-sustainable too. So you just need to kind of start. It may be a little bit of a stretch to imagine yourself already having 100 cemetery maps. But I mean, if you, if you start collecting them, you can run this strategy. Or whatever. Why am I running the Sulfite Scarab? What is that all about? Well, again, now th this Scarab in particular is for those of you who have a character that is not particularly strong. A little bit weak, you need a little bit of help. Look at this. This is a 100% deterministic 3% all max res, 105% increased damage, and 45% increased movement speed. I dare you to tell me that's not overpowered. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's not overpowered only because it requires you to use a master, which, by the way, doesn't even technically require Scarab because I could just run one of the 71 master missions I have loaded up. Uh, but for the sake of being, you know, cool with the... Uh, imagine yourself running this uh, strategy indefinitely. You would have to use the Scarab. 
to throw Nico onto the map. The Divination Scarab, you know, Brother Stash drops here. I'm going to see it probably maybe once, once, maybe twice in 100 maps. Uh, I'll also see things like Alluring Bounty and Abandoned Wealth and stuff from Divination boxes. It's pretty nice. Rusted Ambush Scarab, we're going to get some more Scarabs out of that. We're going to get Divina Diviner Strong Boxes. We're going to get, you know, just the usual stuff there. Strong Boxes, crazy strong. Even with zero Sextants, it's still strong. And Harbinger again, putting some Harbingers on the map. But what are we running? What are we going to run? On the Atlas. Well, here we go. We're not going to run Harbinger. We're not going to run Ambush. We're going to run Domination, baby. Yeah, that's how we get... That's how we virtually guarantee that we become an unstoppable killing machine. With just outrageous amounts of speed. And clear and proliferation and defense. Uh, you're going to have like, I guess it would be 10 major shrine effects on you at once. Because we're guaranteed three. We're guaranteed one from the Atlas passives. We will probably get a second from the Atlas passives. I think at least 50% of the time. We're guaranteed three here. And we're guaranteed another one from the Sexton here. Because I did go elevated uh, Sexton I'm on here. Just yet. Oh. I just realized I, I made one small error... I did make one small error. One thing I forgot to do. I know, I know. I forgot to do one thing. Okay. So these sections are obviously not free. So we do need to factor that into the initial cost. Let me reset this. I'm coming to you guys clean. Like I'm not going to like redo the video or whatever. To be completely honest with you, I tried to do another video earlier. It didn't go so well. I was trying an actual Alk and Go with self-sustaining scarabs and stuff. It didn't go well. So I am buying all the scarabs outright. And now let's check here. Reset. Okay, 8.36. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Now the reason this exalts here is it covers the cost of the compasses. Now, I suppose I could even show you this. Bring it back down one more time. Oh my god, what does the compass cost? Oh, it's like... Oh, hold on here, let's get this right. Uh, oh, it's basically nothing. It's the price of the compass. Now that's non-elevated. You can run non-elevated if you want. If you're cool like me and you want to go the extra mile, you can run elevated and it's probably the cheapest elevated sextant you've ever seen at a cost of 20 or less chaos apiece. Complete joke, man. Like, what? What? That these people are just trying to recoup their losses <laughs> by pricing it at this price. Because an elevated section is at least like more than 20 chaos. Uh, so I suspect a lot of people hit this when they're rolling elevated sections and they just roll over it. They don't even bother trying to sell it. Or whatever. You could go on TFT and try to buy the compass outright if you want. I don't know. The point is, it's practically free. And to not run that section is just kind of dumb. And to be completely honest with you guys. I mean, if I was doing this for real, I would be running like, I'd still be running like 500% quantity, strong box, whatever. But uh, you know what? I'm trying to make this as super simple and easy to understand as you can. And I want to prove that this strategy is going to make some currency. It's not going to make huge currency. I do want to give that disclaimer. This strategy is not going to make crazy, insane currency. But I am predicting around 5x an hour. Uh, maybe. It might, it, might, it might honestly do like 5x an hour. Okay. If at any point in time you're watching this video and you become overcome with a sudden sense of desire, for lack of a better word, uh, feel free to turn this video off. Buy yourself a goal. Change your Atlas passives to what, you know, take the character that you have, whatever character it is, you know, character boss or map or whatever it is, change the map passives, Atlas passives over to something like this. Doesn't, you don't have to have every single point, but something like this. You probably drop the uh, influence pack size pa uh, passives first. And, you know, have yourself a time, okay? But for the meantime, feel free to stick around. Watch this video. Uh, yeah, sit down, buckle up. We're going to run Domination. You're in for a ride here. <laughs> this is going to be hilarious. I'm actually really looking forward to this. And I, I've My been enjoying this farm so much. They're just making it even simpler, even faster than ever before. And I'm t 
taking the headhunter off just to prove it, that honestly you don't even need the headhunter at all. Totally don't need it. Oh boy. Spawned uh, Delirium. Well, that's fun. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to immediately pick up all the shrines. And I might have a little bit of lag because it's my first game of the day. And I'm in a Delirium map on the very first map. Look how close all these shrines are. It was a mini shrine. It's a defensive shrine. Oh boy. What's that? What's this shrine? I still don't have my uh, Gloom shrine, unfortunately. I'm not really going to pick up any strong boxes. I'm going to try to hit all the Nico stuff. You can see how many monsters surround each shrine. It's absolutely ridiculous. Now, from here, what I would usually do is I would go straight to the map boss. I'd just try to find the map boss, but instead, uh, since Delirium spawned, I am going to like kind of clear out front here. Otherwise, I won't get quite as much maximum of value here. Now, if you were in this position, you would probably want to beeline for the Gloom Shrine. I think I've hit all the shrines except the Gloom Shrine, so it's sitting around here. Oh no, there's even more shrines. Apparently, it's like six shrines in this <laughs> Now I'm running a raider, so I have all the movement speed and phasing and everything. But here we go. Okay, now now I, uh, now I am like Mr. Invincible. I have the oh I forgot to mention this. I have the Covetous Shrine. I have the Resistance Shrine. There you go, 90% all res. Right there, you could pause the map if you wanted to. Oh, okay, Gloom Shrine. I'm pretty sure this is Shrine number 7. You can see how many shrines I have up top here. It's absolutely disgusting. Uh, I'm just going to go in here and uh, destroy the map boss since uh, it's going to be a complete joke. Honestly, I don't really care about the del Delirium. I wasn't paying that much attention to it anyway. And we're going to go back out here and we'll just basically, after I get the all the shrines, I kill the map boss, I got... Now I finally got all the Nico stuff. The Nico buffs are right here. And I just go around and I just pick up everything, loot everything. I didn't tell you guys this ahead of time, but I am running a uber strict loot filter. I did adjust it slightly, but I'm really not picking up anything that is worth less than half a chaos. Anything that is worth at least half a chaos, I'm probably picking it up. I'm not even putting a remnant of corruption in my bag. I'll, I'll get remnants of corruption faster than I need care to use them, probably. So, yeah. Should be a couple more strong boxes down here. So, honestly, most maps, I won't even really see much in the way of loot. Uh, but there will be some maps where we'll really crank up. Uh, part of my currency per hour is going to be relied primarily on um, altars. I'm going to get particularly favorable altars. Here we go. i got a couple six links. Those, of course, are going to drop from... Oh, fine. Yeah, I forgot about the Harbinger. Okay. Harbinger just gets completely destroyed. And I'm in this map a bit longer than normal because of the clear on the Delirium. We'll see if the next map's a little faster. I think that was everything. I definitely earned money on that map thanks to a couple of six links that dropped there. I didn't get any exalted shards or anything. Uh, actually, I'm going to check this cluster jewel. I guess this is... This cluster jewel is... I don't know. It's not terrible. Uh, but it's okay. And that's map number one. Not ambush. We've got domination. Just trying to have a grand old time. Just... just Hilarious speed, hilarious defense, hilarious offense. Why did I get you know, trying to showcase this legitimately? I keep spawning delirium random. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend I don't even have delirium on this one. Of course, then I run into the delirium boss. Yeah. Okay. Now I have the resistance shrine. Basically, no spells can possibly kill me at this point. I have a minor speed shrine. I think last map I didn't even get the real speed shrine, which is. Like, really sad. Already, both of these maps, I've been in unlucky because it's always like the last shrine. The last shrine I find is the one 
the gloom shrine, the most important shrine. Like once I find the gloom shrine, everything just dies instantly. Here, here it is. Okay, gloom shrine's on. Everything dies. Everything just dies. Look at it. It just instantly dies. It doesn't matter. I could have a single target ability. I can have a massive clear ability. It doesn't matter. Everything. Once one monster dies in a group, every monster dies in a group. Complete joke of the map. There's my delirium. It's over. Delirium is not good on cemetery really at all. I think the maximum number of splinters I've ever gotten is like 40. <laughs> Delirium with a strategy like this. But hey, you know, it doesn't really matter. Still got shrines. Oh, wow. I've still got some more shrines to pick up up here. Okay, Elder Chamber items. Sounds good when I'm running Searing Exar. Got a couple of operative strong boxes. Nice, nice, Garrett. Nice drops out of that one. Okay. Definitely made more than my cost right there in that strong box alone. Okay, I don't know why I haven't found the map boss yet. That's really weird. <laughs> oh no, more shrines down there. What is going on? How are there more shrines? Wild. Okay, there we go. And he... Wow, I must have like extra life or something. So the gloom shrine... How much time to have? It still has 30 seconds left. This map will be basically done. I would normally put the remnant of corruption in on this, but still don't have one yet. That's fine. Okay, one real quick pass. Make sure I got the strong boxes. Oh yeah, there's a harbinger still left up here. Oh, hey, there you go. And I think. There might be one strong box. I think there's one strong box. I kind of like to leave the strong boxes to the end in case I get like extra quantity and pack size because it affects not only the monsters that spawn but also uh, the amount of stuff that drops out of strong boxes. It looks like everything's clear. It's basically done. A lot of shrine effects still rolling. Basically, uh, easy peasy. The third time's a charm here. Maybe I can not spawn delirium and just kind of focus a little bit more here. By the way, I didn't even check the modifiers on these maps. I'm just running them with whatever they have. Like, I, it doesn't matter. It could be like the worst modifiers. As long as it doesn't outright brick your build, you're going to have so much extra defense and offense stuff that doesn't matter. Okay, here we go. Shrines. Okay, we're going for Shrines and Nico uh, Sulfite, as well as hitting the Altars, of course, if they drop. I want to hit those immediately. Alright, there's... Okay, here we go. This one's finally got the Gloom Shrine. Okay, now I'm in kill mode. Anything I come across at this point, I'm killing. I'm trying to find the map boss at this point, if possible. I have an echoing shrine to see how outrageous that is. It turns my uh, single target DPS from 2 million to like 8 million DPS or something because of how absolutely busted it is. Oh, yeah, that 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 was that was not smart. <laughs> well, since I died. <laughs> Uh, that does throw a little curveball in here. So if you die like that, like a complete idiot, like I just did, uh, completely unnecessary death. I mean, I had 90 fire res, and I still died right there because I took like 10 of those hits at once. Honestly, just... It's kind of hard not to go to sleep at the wheel when you're playing like this. Because <laughs> it's just so ridiculously easy. So fortunately, my character is... You know, perfectly capable of clearing, even without a bunch of shrine buffs. Not going to be a big deal for me. Uh, that may hurt you a little bit. You know, if your character is really weak and you lose all your shrine buffs, you lose the gloom shrine right there. But hey, you know, try not try not to die like I just did. That's about all I got to say on that. You'll notice that uh, my experience bar is being progressed pretty nicely. I've been running a strategy like this. I did test this strategy before and virtually never died. I'm definitely dying, I, I'm definitely uh, progressing my experience bar more than I'm dying, as you can see, 
in here. I haven't bought any experience services, no five ways or nothing. And I'm in the middle of level 98. I'm pretty, I'm quite obviously going to be able to solo level my way to 99 doing this strategy. The shrines make me almost unkillable with the exception of doing something completely stupid like what I did a moment ago. My mana is gone. And you get so much experience so fast that constantly it, it just it's bewildering how much experience you get uh, doing this. Hey, I knew I left something up here. Prefer not to exit the map without killing King Harbinger. Oh, especially with a couple Grand Eldritch. So this is one reason I'm going Searing Exarch because these are worth like six or seven chaos apiece. The other side is not necessarily uh, worth as much. Of course, the incandescent. Uh, invitation which I'll be getting is worth quite a bit so ironically I've still kind of failed to run a really really fast map let's see if I can actually do this this time so I guess I need to not spawn delirium and I need to not die in a completely stupid way if I can do both of those things at once I will have myself a good old time Okay, Gloom Shrine acquired. I could pick up the Minor Shrine back there, but honestly, with all these Major Shrines I'm getting, I probably don't need to. Definitely do want to pick up the, uh, Nico, oh god, Echoing Shrine now. Woo! 3% chance for Scarab, Map Boss, Eldritch Currency, yeah, I'll take that. I'm gonna have to do some extra clicking on this map since I'm going to be getting a lot of scarabs, but hey, you know, that's where some of the currency comes from, so I'm delighted for that. Let's go ahead and kill this boss first, make the altars, future altars that spawn a little bit better. It's a nice quick tip there. Uh, you do want to try and kill the map boss really early if you can find him. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, completely drop everything I'm doing just to try and find the map boss with this strategy, although I do for some of my other strategies, more juiced up strategy. Okay, another shrine, just complete shrine overkill at this point. Totally unstoppable. I promise you guys, this is what what you see right now on your screen is way more power than a headhunter offers you and the thing about headhunter is the the buffs come and go you know for, you, you'll be going along you'll have like 40 headhunter buffs you'll be kind of immortal and then suddenly you'll just have like 10 headhunter buffs and you'll be somewhat squishy again and then you know you have to kill a bunch of rares uh, sometimes the rares aren't around with the shrines you know the the big limiting fact with the shrines is that the number of shrines and, and the, the buffs you get in the shrine are finite on the map you can't spend all day in a map and continually have buffs like you can with a headhunter where you juice the map up so insanely hard with beyond and everything you're constantly being fed headhunter buffs so that means we just want to orient the map so that uh, we only spend about two minutes in it simple and then we can deterministically make ourselves almost gone. immortal with insane amounts of damage and run speed and you know what the crazy thing about this uh, series, this run session so far, I don't think, I'm pretty sure I have not yet acquired a an acceleration shrine. Ah, oh, some good point. Somebody in the chat mentioned uh, it looks like you skipped the arch nemesis mechanic. Totally forgot to mention that. Yes. Screw the arch nemesis mechanic for this particular strategy. Not worth doing. You know, I've talked, I've looked around on forums. Everybody's skipping this thing now. They're not even doing it. I don't even have to find an L. Okay, well, wait. Yeah, I don't even have to find an L acceleration shrine in order to receive the acceleration shrine. It just has to be fun on the back end. Like, oh, okay, there we go. All right, so there you go. You can see it now. I have finally acquired the all powerful acceleration shrine. And the speed at which I'm running through this map, now I have, I've double, I'm double dipping acceleration shrine. Uh, the speed at which I run through the map right now, 
incomparable to what a headhunter does. A headhunter does not make you run this fast under any circumstances. It does not make you run this fast. Now, part of the reason I am running this fast is because my character is a raider, and I naturally have 100% increased movement speed. I have 200% increased movement speed uh, with a flask up. So that is probably going to be different to you. So you're not going to actually run this fast unless you have a high-speed, uh, high-octane raider. But, I mean, look, look at this. Just just look at this. This, this is absolutely stupid. How powerful this is. I have 6,200 life. I normally have 4,300 life. I have 90 all res. I have how, how much... Armor, 46,000 armor. That's at least double the armor that I normally have. I mean, it's just absolutely stupid. A stupid amount of damage, armor, damage, defense, and speed. The holy trinity of power, basically. All the power in the world. Uh, the speed at which I can double check and clear the map. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like, that's easy. I, I, I literally cover and check the entire map in 10 seconds flat. That's done. Okay, map finished. That right there is a good representation of what you're kind of looking at. And honestly, most maps you are going to get an acceleration shrine. I've just been really unlucky that I didn't see one until now. I probably did that map in two minutes flat. Probably. I didn't time it, but... Yeah. So, yeah, now I'm just gonna keep going. Oh, here's a immor Immortality Shrine. You do have to be a little bit careful in this because I can't kill the monsters around it. Makes it really kind of tricky to click. Sometimes it's really hard to click. There's one thing I don't like about the little shrines. A lot of people complain about that. It's just a little thing we kind of have to deal with. So on the positive side, now I take zero damage. I take actually zero damage. And I once again have an acceleration shrine. So I am now literally immortal with <laughs> an acceleration. Aha, uh -huh. one minute and 45 seconds remaining on <laughs> immortality and acceleration. Oh, and I don't even have my Gloom Shrine yet, which is sad. For some reason, still don't have... Still not getting any Corrupted Essences. I kind of wanted to talk about Essences a little bit. I, I'm still not a huge fan of it, but I noticed uh, Essence prices are, are fluctuating back in a more favorable position now. Especially with the discovery of Fractured Mob Essence... Or fractured Item Essence Crafting with Eldritch Influence Implicit. I think we're all quite surprised to see that that works. <laughs> so now Essence is the premium way to craft uh, a lot of gear, whereas it wasn't necessarily before as expected. Especially for this Omniscience gear, you can like, you know, fracture your uh, dexterity, T1 dexterity or whatever, and then you can like Essence roll T1 strength and then random T1 intelligence and then and then put in Exarch Eater of World Implicit on that same item, which is so, so overpowered. Well, okay, that map's done. <laughs> oh, the map's done. I wasn't done talking, but the map is done. Okay. I see, even with just this stuff I found here, I mean, that's anyway, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say it's a bad it. idea. Do it. Okay, there's a raw exalted orb that dropped off of the uh, enormous pack size of shrine monsters, which, you know, I've only killed like thousands of shrine monsters now at this point. In the first few maps, it's not that big of a surprise to see an exalted orb, raw X drop. And that is the benefit of going high quantity, high increased effective modifiers, double or, or eight modded corrupted maps on top of that. Definitely uh, going to see more raw exalt drops because of it. Kind of goes without saying, but you know, part of the benefit of of setting up your map so that you're just so insanely powerful as you run the map, it completely.
completely alleviates the downside. I mean, almost completely alleviates the downsides of running an 8 modded corrupted map that would otherwise be uh, challenging, perhaps. Uh, it's much, much less challenging. Especially, like, some of the really nasty modifiers, like um, Max All Res, Minus Max All Res, uh, is, is just n more than nullified by a single resistance shrine. <laughs> so... Uh, and the chance of finding a resistance shrine is very high. I mean, I have one on me right now. Metamorph, honestly, Metamorph, I, I seriously would probably do it if this boss had at least two bosses. If it had at least two bosses on this map, I would probably do it. Because I do like a Metamorph. Oh, what do we got? Oh, we got uh, the other... Dragon's Heart. Okay, so this is a divination card that has dropped that I think a lot of people aren't aware that drops in the cemetery. It's Dragon's Heart. It drops from... I don't know. It just seems to drop in the cemetery. But uh, when I checked... Actually, I don't know. Maybe it drops from Searing Exarch Influence Monsters or something. Because when I check, say it drops in the cemetery, nothing comes up. There's no evidence of it dropping in the cemetery. Does anybody know in the chat uh, where the dragon... If you'd like to do some research on this divination card. It's called the Dragon's Heart. It's worth uh, 56 chaos. I mean, that's a, that's a healthy chunk. I, I made tons of currency on that map. Got an Exalted Orb and a... Eldritch Chaos Orb and a Dragon's Heart. That, that was a big map. Big map indeed. <laughs> oh, exalted or up a breach monster of all things. I'm not up to that just yet. Okay. Like, I, I don't even really even do Breach. It's just... <laughs> I spec out of Breach. And it still gave me Exalted Orb, whereas Essence is just giving me... Oh. I think I had 90 already there. Hey! That is the... Harbinger. Currency shards might may drop as raw currency. Uh, that is about the, I don't know, maybe the fifth time I've ever seen a raw exalted orb drop that way. And I've killed like thousands of harbingers, so it's pretty rare, but um, there it happened. Wow. Okay, so that's a raw exalted orb that dropped from the minion of the harbinger. Almost, uh, it, it tried to pretend that it dropped off the harbinger itself. Hey! Hey, look. Couple burial medallions. Yeah. Salt shark. Oh! What's this? Yeah! What I'm talking about Diviner Strongbox really pulling through sometimes. That's not even the good one. You know, Luring Bounty is better than that. But I swear I see those surprisingly frequently. A Luring Bounty times two or Abandoned Wealth times two. And I mean, I've, I've seen dozens. Maybe not dozens, though. Well over a dozen of each of those cards just from Diviner Strong Boxes this season. Did I pick me up? Missed the boss? Oh no, I did the boss. Yeah. <laughs> Thought I missed the boss. Okay, the map drop. Q.
Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, five maps. I'm getting something like one full bar in four or five maps. Which is pretty wild, even at this level. I'm quite surprised. I feel like, I don't know, if maybe the influence monsters give extra experience or something, but something feels weird about how much XP you get. Oh, nice. Another exalted orb. That's two raw X from the Harbinger. That's definitely uh, luckier than average for even just 100, even 100 maps. Good RNG, definitely gotten some good RNG on the raw X drops in this particular map session. But a lot of other things seem worse. Like Essence, like Divination card. Excellent. Oh, maybe this spawned Hunted Traders. I, yeah, I think this spawned Hunted Traders, maybe. So many monsters. Honestly, probably from a hunter trader. <laughs> uh, maybe you know, because we still don't know how how those work with uh, yeah. Oh well, hello there. Yeah, is that in response to the brother's stash, or is that just you actually coming into the channel at, at this time? It took me 96 maps to get a brother's stash to drop. But I definitely, uh, I've, I've been running this map enough to know that I deserve probably one and only one brother stash in a hundred maps with this kind of juicing. And again, that's, um, mainly because I am actually cranking up the quantity pack size quite a bit. I mean, this map is just outrageously thick. So when I've been running my strong box strategies with the increased 500% uh, quantity modifier to monsters that spawn from strong boxes, and kind of doing like uh, polished or gilded scarabs and, and actually running like four sextants and stuff, I've been finding a brother stash but once every 20 to 30 maps. Okay, it's been going on for uh, three hours. Okay, yeah, it looks like it took me again about two and a half. Let's uh, yeah, we'll do this here. Uh, started at 38. Yeah, yeah, really, I, again, so I ran 50 maps the night before. It took me basically nine hours. I mean, it's what am I saying? Uh, two hours and 45 minutes to run 50 maps. I, I woke up this morning, ran again. It took me basically exactly two hours and 45 minutes. So it's going to be five hours and 50 minutes uh, total. There is one more snapshot to do. Okay, there we go. The results are 48 exalts, 0.28, uh, minus 8.3, you know, basically 48.3 minus 8.3 to get the net profit. Okay, basically, uh, yeah, 48 or 40 exalts uh, net profit. And uh, I just mentioned a second ago that. Uh, two hours and 45 minutes to run the first 50 maps. It, it was like exactly the same during the second 50 maps. So take that times two. That's five hours and a half total time. So this is pretty easy to look at here. 5.5. 5. Uh, yeah, 7.2. Now I had done the calculation um, of after the first night. I only came up to like 5.8. Or around six so uh, clearly 
and I was I was feeling this way. Clearly, my RNG was much worse on the first uh, 50 maps and the second 50 than the second 50 maps. I got more exalted orbs in the second 50 maps. I think I got more scarabs. Uh, I got a brother stash on the 96th map. <laughs> Finally got one of those. So that was in the highlight there. Um, yeah, I will have highlighted every exalted or every major drop that I got in here. Now you do 100 maps like this, there aren't that many major drops uh, because we're not running any sextants minus the one to make me clear faster. Um, even with uh, cranking up the quantity, the uh, effect of modifiers in the map is really nice, you know, and, and it's definitely helping with uh, the opportunity to get some big drops. It's not like I'm being flooded with big drops. It's not like I'm really juicing the map, because that's not what this strategy was all about. Uh, so I, ho I hope you enjoyed <laughs> seeing the crazy zoom zoom strategy that was really all about just having fun, not about farming currency per se. I mean, obviously, you know, you want to farm some currency, uh, but with a reasonably geared ra raider in particular, uh, you, I pulled off over 7x an hour doing this, so I, I think you could say, you know, 5, or sorry, 6 to 8. I'll probably say like 5 to 7x an hour, because most people aren't going to run quite as fast as me. I think 5 to 7x an hour uh, is what you might anticipate, you know, if, if you're at least running a semi-geared uh, mapping character, for sure, you should should be able to match that. There's a lot of stuff in here. I do want to kind of clarify a couple of things in here. I am, I am calculating the uh, the maps that drop. I, I went out of my way and removed a lava chamber maps. It's an adjacent map that drops off of the cemetery and nobody wants it. So I just removed all of those. But uh, I had favored a toxic sewer cemetery, promenade, and one other, which I forgot. Uh, oh yeah, city square. So they are kind of the the high value maps that are going for three, possibly four chaos per uncorrupted. Um, yeah, maybe a couple of my maps in here are corrupted, but uh, most, the vast majority are not. Uh, there's a lot of deception contracts in here. I didn't even pick up perception and some other things, but I, I picked up deception. I picked up the blueprints that were worth a fair bit. Uh, those items, the highest items do not even appear in here. So that's gonna kind of offset Maybe there are a few of these maps that are like corrupted or whatever that uh, th things will even out fairly well there. Uh, you can see there's uh, yeah Toxic Sewer. Uh, if you check PoE Ninja, it's coming up there almost four chaos per right now. I, I don't know. It's hard to say exactly what the price is. I found 23 of those maps. Uh, cemetery, you know, a lot of that's going to be self-sustained. 54 maps there. Um, nine raw exalt, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, I, I found six raw exalts, so an extra three from a lot of exalted shards. I, I got more exalted shards on the second night, or the second farm, too. Uh, 147 chaos. Uh, yeah, four incandescent invitations, thanks to uh, the 20% increased uh, chance of doubling the progression towards that. Allowed me to get four, to squeeze in four uh, invitations in 100 maps. So that's nice. Uh, you know, a lot of, lot of scarabs obviously embedded in here. Essences. So I felt like... So for me personally, I don't really like essences because I, I feel like it's just not really producing much. Uh, but for the sake of this particular strategy, trying to go as fast as you can, I'm glad I went essences. I, I think it's a big part of, you know, this Alk and Go mindset. You know, just getting those essences is fast as you can. Oh yeah, I got uh, one Conquer invitation there. That's uh, 30 Chaos. One Blighted map. <laughs> uh, my first my first 50 maps, I, I for some reason spawned Delirium a lot and, and I ended up with more Delirium orbs than you would normally expect, uh, but nothing crazy there. About five Eldritch Exalted orbs. And only three Eldritch Chaos orbs of course, since they're worth a lot more. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, four Gilded Divination Scarabs. You know, there's nothing, you know, too crazy in it. 17 Divine Orb. That feels a little bit low, honestly, because... I don't know. That's not very many six links. I think I only found maybe three or four Raw X, or I mean, uh, Raw Divine Orb. So here's how I know that my Exalted Orb 
RNG was a little bit more favorable than usual because I, I believe the divine orbs exalted orbs have the same exact drop rate so if you're if you're farming and you and you happen to be finding raw divine orbs way more than raw exalted orbs that's you getting kind of screwed over uh, but it, for these hundred maps I definitely found more raw X than I found raw divines uh, I think I found six raw X and I found either three or four raw divines so RNG was favorable there for certain um, Although I will say, uh, two of those raw X came from... Now that's not really fair though, because two of the raw X came from the Harbingers. Now, that's as a result of the Harbinger raw, uh, Exalted Shards turning into Exalted Orbs. Well, Harbingers don't d drop Divine Shards, so that can't even happen. So actually, in hindsight, maybe it was kind of more <clears throat> exactly 50-50. Okay, so yeah, a lot of essences there. You know, essences really aren't even worth all that much these days, but you know, it is what it is. I did get a couple essences of horror. They're the most valuable essence. Uh, like a 20, 22 chaos per. Uh, uniques. Okay, so uniques, I had terrible RNG. Absolutely terrible. Uh, I, I got, I, that I can remember. I got one unique, only one, that's even worth putting in the bag. That means like one unique that was worth more than five chaos. And that was a Cena's chant. So it's listed at 30 chaos. That is the only unique. And I mean, like half the maps I, I take, I pick up the modifier, altar modifier, El, uh, Eldritch influence monsters have a X percent chance of dropping unique items. So, I mean, tons of unique items are dropping. Uh, but it's just really, really hard to find any uh, decent value uniques for me in this particular farm. I found two synthesis maps. I'd say that was a little bit luckier than average, actually. And, well, that's about it. One brother stash hiding in there. What, where, where did it go? Where is it? Where are you at? Okay, yeah, I found one. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> uh, as far as brother stash is concerned, using a rusted divination scarab without... You know, juicing things up crazy, just kind of relying specifically on high quantity, high uh, pack size. I do think it's reasonable. I, I see no reason not to count one brother stash in a hundred maps. I, I think doing that. Now, if I was just doing like low quantity Alk and Go, you know, with no divination scarab, then that would be considered lucky, I'd say, to find one brother stash in a hundred maps. But with how I was running these, no, no, it, it I honestly expected to find one possibly two because i'm used to finding uh, one brother stash every 20 to 30 maps uh, when i juice the map so i have a pretty good sense of uh, where the drop rate's really at on this item and it is a very good divination card to farm i think it's on par with uh farming nurse cards or uh doctor cards in fact uh, i wasn't sure about that for quite a while but i'm getting to the point where i can confidently say the brother stash is a worthy uh, divination card to farm and, and I like the cemetery layout way more than uh, tower or burial chambers, especially now with how the uh, rushing to the map boss works to adjust the altars so that they are premium altars and when you spawn on, you know, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, so there we have the results. So this is like a five to seven chaos or five to seven exalts per hour strategy. And it's not really even about that. It's just about having fun, going crazy. <laughs> Insane movement speed, insane clear speed. Um, honestly, I, I, I was going to do something. I kind of forgot to do this, but I kind of want to go into my POB and like click active every single shrine and see just how much more uh, survivability and how much more damage that gives my character. You should do that. You should go in just just for fun. Go into your POB, check check your own character, take a look at, at the stats it has, and then go in and check every single shrine, and just see how much more powerful that makes you. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, as well as um, packed with energy. Notable, uh, right here. This guy here. Th this is people are sleeping on this thing. Like this thing is super good. Uh, apparently you have it even if you die i think even if you die speaking of dying i did die uh, i think like eight times eight times in 100 maps even at level 98 i still progress my experience bar with deaths like once every 12 maps i feel like i got one bar of xp about once every five or six maps so that's pretty wild
Honestly, I didn't expect that. I, it feels really strange to me to be getting such good XP at like level 98. Um, able to solo level my way all the way to, a, to 99. And honestly, if I get a little bit more intelligent, a little bit more careful... And like if I, for example, if I just stop running maps that have minus all res on them and you know, things like that, that don't have beyond, don't have all res, and kind of continue to do the strategy, I see no reason why I couldn't have solo leveled all the way to 100. And I think the only real prerequisite to that uh, with this strategy is that you have 100% spell suppression, that you have uh, quite a bit of armor. You can see I'm running like determination. Uh, I have Defiance Banner as well. I have um, Alchemist Granite Flask with the armor uh, suffix. So, so my survivability is pretty nice. Uh, and I'm running a Raider, which is pretty decent survivability. Uh, decent evasion, although my evasion is only... Um, it's not all that high, really. What, where is it at here? Uh, 65%. Okay, it'd be 78 with the uh, flask on. So I'm kind of sacrificing my evasion a little bit. And I do have some chaos res, actually. Some people run with no chaos res. <laughs> kind of a mistake. Uh, so that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. And, uh, you know, uh, now, now for sure, I'm going to put the headhunter on. You know, I'm going to do it right now. Right now. Okay. Okay, come here, little guy. Okay, there. You happy? I'm wearing my headhunter. <laughs> I will now begin farming with the headhunter, doing more juicing strategies. Um, many of you may not know, I am going to be making a tornado shot. So the new elemental tornado shot is the all the hype with the omniscient amulet. I want to try that for myself. Uh, I'm going to go for a major... It'll be a major gearing exercise. I'm going to be spending probably... I'm going to try to farm multiple mirrors to, to make a, you know an uber-geared one. That's kind of my long-term goal this season. It's nice to have long-term goal this season. I didn't have such a goal last season, actually. Yeah. So we'll look forward to that and more videos to come. Thank you guys for watching. See you I'm in the next one. Yet.